In this video, we'll go through the steps required to create a basic Google form. So I'm in my Google Drive, which is where I need to be to start the process. I'm going to go to New. It's not one of the standard three things, but it is under More, the top item, Google Forms. I can create a blank form, which is what we're going to do today. Or if you have access to a template someone else has created, you can do this one. But we're going to start with a blank form. As with any Google document or any type of Google document, uh, the first thing we're going to do is change the title. As soon as I click up into the title area, you can see that the title of that changed to whatever I typed in here. This could be the area where you tell people what the form is about. Very simple, may include instructions. Uh, and then here we get right into the questions. When you see the set of dots, it means you can grab the question, you can move it around the form, which we obviously don't need to do because it's the only question right now. Or if I click on it, it allows me to edit the form. So here's my first question, it's untitled. So there's my question, that's what it's going to be. And there are all sorts of different types of questions I can have here, and I can see them through this drop-down list. The short answer option is quite short at 36 characters. Paragraph option allows 72 characters per line, but many lines. Many, many lines. Those are the two options if you want them to free flow type. Other question types include multiple choice, where the user can only choose one of the options presented. Check boxes where the user can choose many of the options provided. Drop down, people can only choose one answer. Uh, there can be a file upload question, linear scale, rate something on a scale of zero to five. Multiple choice, again, it says multiple choice, so it means the person can only choose one of the possibilities. On a weather grid, maybe that's not as relevant. Uh, you're probably more likely to want a tick box grid and both grids allow you to set column headers, so for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and options down the side, rainy, clear, warm, cold, windy, etc., because it can be both clear and windy, so you may want to be, allow them to choose two of the options. Date and time, allow the user to choose a particular date and time, perhaps if they want to book an appointment or something. Um, note that the date and time that they fill out the form is recorded in your answers. So those are your question types. This will allow you to duplicate a question. This will allow you to eliminate a question. And this says that the person must answer the question. Here are some options that allow you to put some restrictions on it or allow it to sort of behave in kind of a smart way. So you can actually go to a different section on your form based on their answer. You can shuffle the option order. So if you're actually using this to make a quiz, you may not want the answers to appear in the same order for each person doing it. So let's actually create the question. How is the weather? I'm going to choose check boxes. And there are my options. So the other things I can do in my form, I've got this one question set up. This allows me to add more questions. This allows me to bring in questions from a Google Doc. This is a new feature. Uh, this allows me to add a title and description to the form, add an image to the question, add a video to this question, and add a new section. None of these are things we're going to really go into right now, but I thought you might like to see the options. Other things that you should consider, uh, this allows you to add Google add-ons. Again, not something I'm going to talk about now, but there are many cool things you can do with forms. This allows you to customize the look of it. So I can choose an image I have, or I can choose one of the ones that they offer. There at the bottom, you can see where I can upload or choose my own albums, or I can choose one of the options that they give me. And then notice it will actually set a theme color and it may even change the font a bit for you there. Those are my theme options. I can also change the font down here. Other things you may want to look at, you can preview the form. What is it going to look like for people who receive it? And this is the one that's particularly important is the settings. So under settings, you can actually set this up to be a quiz or a presentation. But this is the area we want to focus on. Uh, do you want to collect the email addresses? This way you know who filled in the form. You could issue a receipt, so they got an email back saying that you got the response. And this is the one that you need to pay attention to if this form is going off-site. So for example, if it's going to parents or teachers at another school, you want to uncheck this box, because otherwise only people from Preston can see it. Do you want them to only have one answer? So if you're doing something for voting or a quiz, you probably only want them to answer it once. Do you want them to be able to go back and edit their answers? Click Save. And then your send options, you can send it via email, give the addresses. You can just keep it simple. I've invited you to fill out this form, or you, or you can put more of a description in. You can include the form in the email. You can have a link to the form that you can send out. 
or you can get the HTML code, which means you can embed it in a web page. Enough about that right now. Cancel that. And then over here, you can also make a copy, get a link that is pre filled in a certain degree, add other collaborators or other people, add ons, and then further preferences. So that is your intro to how to create a form. If you have any questions about this or any other Crescent technology, please don't hesitate to let myself or Syra know. And I hope you have a great day.